now that we have discussed the four chamber view and atypical reviews, including the atypical lateral view, focused view of the right ventricle, the left ventricle, and the coronary sinus view, and of course the five chamber view, we will move on discussing the two chamber view and also the apical long axis view by means of the apical views. Again, how to achieve the views? You stay at the apical parts of the left ventricle. This is a highly variable view. You start with the four chamber view, the marker pointing towards the left side of the patient. The patient is not entirely left lateral. And then you start with a rotational movement, counterclockwise, always keeping the structures you want to see in your field of view. So remember, fifth intercostal space, approximately go to the point where you feel probably the heartbeat or where you just simply see the left ventricular apex, the marker left lateral, the rotation counterclockwise for the two chamber view, it's 60 to 90 degrees from the four chamber view for the apical long axis or three chamber view, it's 90 to 120 degrees. The apical views to recall them for the four chamber view, you have this orientation and then you start the rotation and continue rotation until you see the structures you need to find. So with a counterclockwise rotation, approximately 60 to 90 degrees, you cut the heart from this perspective, visualizing the left ventricle and the left atrium. And then if you continue more 90 to 120 degrees, you find the apical long axis view. So it's called apical long axis because it's simply the same structures to be visualized what you have seen with the peristernal long axis view. If you want to see the peristernal views, there's an entire video designated for only the peristernal long axis view. The two chamber view, what can you see? You see the entire inferior wall and anterior wall. This is a focused view of the left ventricle and you can see parts of the mitral valve, the AMVL and the PMVL. About the mitral valve, we will talk in detail a little bit later. Also, the coronary sinus can appear here and you will need the measurements of the left atrium as well. So perform a normal two-chamber view where you see the left ventricle and the left atrium and the focused two-chamber view, for example, for ejection fraction calculation or strain imaging. Why the two-chamber view? Of course, it's about the global longitudinal function, the ejection fraction, wall motion abnormalities, it's a regional left ventricular function and also about the valvular and the atrial structures. Here we have two examples, two patients. We have here an apical wall motion abnormality in an anterior STEMI, an anterior ST elevation myocardial infarction. And on the right hand side, we have a half ref, so a heart failure with reduced rejection fraction in ischemic heart disease, where you can see the truly severely reduced left ventricular function. In this case, we have an inferior wall STEMI patient. This patient had a STEMI in the inferior wall. We do see here a kinesia of those segments. We see normal contraction over here, but here it is truly akinetic. So there is no movement. There's also thinning of the wall. So this is probably already scarring of the left ventricle. And on the right hand side, we do see a hyperdynamic left ventricular function. There is severe mitral regurgitation present. We do see atrial fibrillation, a hyperdynamic left ventricular function also pointing towards the severity and the really severe mitral regurgitation. Visualizing the coronary sinus view, here you have it very, very subtle, very small. In this case, it's truly an enlarged coronary sinus. This is most likely in this young patient due to a persistent left superior vena cava. So many structures you can visualize in only a few angulation and views. Why the two chamber view for the valve? It's about the mitral valve, mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis. And here in this case, you see nicely a flail leaflet. Here you see it as well, the truly broad jet origin in this patient with a flail leaflet. Which part of the mitral valve we will discuss shortly. Now continuing from the two chamber view, Counterclockwise rotation approximately 30 degrees. Overall from the four chamber view, it's 90 to 120 degrees. You are then seeing the apical long axis view. The apical long axis view, you can see the left ventricle, the left atrium, the LVOT, the aortic valve, parts of the ascending aorta, the mitral valve, 
and to a lesser degree also the right ventricle. So the right ventricle is allowed to be in the field of view. So the apical long axis view resembling the peristernal long axis, here you have the apical long axis with the mitral valve, the anterior and the posterior mitral valve leaflet, the aortic valve, aorta ascendance, the right ventricle parts of the tricuspid valve, the left ventricle, the left atrium, and here you see the left ventricle, the left atrium, the mitral valve, anterior, posterior mitral valve leaflet, aortic valve, the LVOT, here the right ventricle. So it's actually the same you can see in those images, just it's a different angulation and different focuses you are looking at the structures. Here, for example, in the peristone long axis, you do not want to see the apex of the left ventricle. Here it is essential that you also visualize the apex, again, for measurements, for wall motion abnormalities, for strain imaging, and so forth. It is important to visualize all three dimensions of the left ventricle and also three views. Here we have the four chamber view in these three plane modes, the two chamber view. Here already the aortic valve comes in our field of view, so it's in between the two and the three chamber view, the epic long axis view. And here a long axis view where you already are a little bit over rotated towards the right ventricle. But with this view, with this modality, you can easily visualize the various views of the heart of the left ventricle easily. Why the three chamber view? Why the apical long axis view? Well, wall motion abnormalities we discussed. Thrombi, hypertrabeculations, thickening of the left ventricular walls, strain imaging. You want to visualize the mitral valve, the aortic valve, the LVOT, to see LVOT obstruction, aortic stenosis. So it's also an important view to have in each and every echocardiographic exam. Here we have an example of a wall motion abnormality where we see the inferolateral region is contracting nicely. There is a normal thickness of the myocardium starting from the apical region, so lateral, and then the apex and the anteroseptal regions. We do see a large scar in a patient with coronary artery disease after a large myocardial infarction. You see the walls here are thin, they are hyperechoic here, the walls look normal, aortic valve and mitral valve. Overall, left ventricular function due to the hyperdynamic contraction of the inferolateral segments doesn't look severely depressed, but with such a scar, of course, left ventricular function has to be significantly reduced. In this case, we have several problems. We have aortic stenosis, where we see turbulent flow and just little movement of the valve. We have aortic regurgitation, which is directly located at the anterior mitral valve leaflet, we can see that there must be mitral regurgitation present as well. We do see a thickened heart, so a pertrified heart due to aortic stenosis most likely. We can also, or we would also visualize mitral stenosis in this view if there would be any present.